what do we do to manage our time at home? And we have a great panel tonight, a panel that's going to help you think through all of these thoughts that I know you're having right now. And I want everyone to know that you can be sure that everyone that we have on Doctors Night Out, these are experts that I know, love, and trust. These are people that are committed and dedicated to constantly grow to serve you. These are your true truth seekers. So welcome this evening. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to break the discussion open. Here are our experts for the night, starting with Noah St. John. Noah is a best-selling author and keynote speaker who's famous for inventing affirmations, a new technology of the mind, and helping busy people achieve more personal and financial freedom. And don't we need that? His sought-after advice is known as the secret sauce in business and personal growth. Welcome, Noah. Great to be here. Thank you, Dr. Kellyanne. Yeah, Maya Feller. Maya is a registered dietitian. She's also been on the show before and everyone wanted her back, so we had to have her back. She specializes in nutrition for chronic disease prevention. Maya believes that making simple food choices, by making simple food choices, you can significantly reduce your risk of developing diet diet related chronic diseases and you know I also have to say she's a bit of a media darling she's all over the place I actually met her on the set of Dr. Oz and we were like sisters immediately totally sisters immediately she's on Good Morning America all the time you know they love her over there she does so much because she really knows her stuff and she has such a beautiful way of presenting so happy that you're here Thank you so much for having me. Yes, Chelsea. So Chelsea's a new friend that I'm so happy to have you on today. And, you know, I need to put you in my pocket because Chelsea is teaching us all how to get organized at work. And she has a passion for helping others create calm in their life. I'm so happy to have you on. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So excited to be here. Yeah. And Deborah Atkinson is a, Deborah Atkinson is, is a friend and I, I just... She is, see how she's all smiley? Like, she's like this all the time. So I've broken bread with her. She's a good woman with a lot of good intentions. She's, a certif she's certified by the American Council on Exercise, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, and has been an international presenter at top industry events. She's an ACE faculty, CEC provider specializing in, of course, hormone balancing exercise prescription. So I want everyone to hear that. That's hormone balancing, exercise prescription. That's really interesting. That's a, an interesting carb that I've never heard before uh, via the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist. That's what she's known as, the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist, along with customer service, marketing, and sales for advancing the business of personal training. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. So glad to be here. Yeah. So... Here's the deal, guys. Uh, you know, here's we're all going cabin cabin crazy now. Cabin fever has set in. We're we're really trying to figure out how do we keep doing this and be happy because what everyone's really being right now is very melancholy. I'm starting to see a bit of a wave of, you know, it's depression, so to speak, kind of rest over everyone's face. And and not only that, but they're starting to feel a little anxiety, you know, it's starting to perk up even more because of the unknowns. And so you know, my philosophy is let's try to get through this by being better on the other side. If we can somehow just be better, get through this tunnel in a way that we come at it and say, wow, you know, now I'm better, I'm stronger, I'm, I've got a better immune system, I'm more fit, uh, my, you know, my, I'm stronger, I have a stronger mindset, I've learned really good techniques on how to eat, and wow, this was great because I'm looking around and now I'm actually organized. So we need to pull you in to help everyone, and I'm so interested in hearing what all of you have to say tonight, that's for sure. You know, I'm going to start with you, Noah. Uh, because you talk about leading the abundant life. And right now, like I said, we're all feeling cabin fever and it seems like anything but abundant to many people right now. We're losing money, we're trapped at home, we're scared about the future. So can you talk about a creating abundance even at a time like this? Yes, absolutely, Dr. Kellyanne. So, you know, one of the things that I've been teaching my coaching clients for the last two decades, you know, I have uh, my company, successclinic.com, 
I had the distinction of being one of the very first personal and business growth websites on the internet. I started this company in my college dorm room in 1997 with $800 in a book on how to do HTML. So I don't know if any of you uh, remember being online in 1997, but you know, remember that, you know, so it's been a long, long time. And so, you know, one of the things that I've been teaching my clients for many years, Dr. Kellyanne, is really how to have a work from home, what we call a freedom lifestyle business. Now, freedom lifestyle, what I've been teaching for years is really four elements. So just four elements. And that's where you have the time, the energy, the relationships, and the money that you really want. So when you look at time, energy, relationships, and money, when you have an abundance of those things, we call that a freedom lifestyle or an abundant lifestyle. Now, naturally, before the virus hit, you know, we were talking about things like traveling the world, right? You know, being going on these fun vacations with your family and friends and your loved ones. Well, naturally, all that is, you know, down to basically nothing right now. Nobody's talking about, hey, let's travel the world. Everybody's talking about, oh my gosh, we got to stay at home. But nevertheless, my clients are really still living what we call that freedom lifestyle, because when you have the time, the energy, the relationships and the money that you really want, well, I mean, then you have freedom because look at it this way. You know, you talked about the fear and anxiety that so many people are feeling. And I see that every single day with people who are coming to me. What I, you know, what I've been teaching for a long time is that fear and control work in opposition. The more control you feel you have over your life, the less fear you feel. But the less perceived control that you have, the more fear that you're going to feel. So it's not about just thinking positive and saying, oh, you know, I can do it. It's about really putting the control in your life, which really comes down to having the right systems in place. Mm, so one of the systems I, I would think is this whole affirmations and you you have that in the back. So we want to know what is that affirmations? Yes, absolutely. So this is something that I invented over 20 years ago. Uh, in fact, it was April uh, 20th, 1997. So this just happens to be the 23rd anniversary right now today. Uh, at the time of this recording of my discovery of affirmation. So of course, everybody watching this program knows what an affirmation is. And affirmation is something we've been taught for decades. You know, the gurus teach us to use these positive statements. You know, so like uh, when I'm doing my virtual trainings or, or even, you know, speaking at conferences, you know, I'll have everybody stand up and I say, okay, let's use an affirmation like I am rich. Everybody goes, I am rich. And you know what happens next? Everybody starts laughing. And I go, what are you laughing at? And they go, well, I don't believe it. And I said, but you just said you were. And they go, yeah, but I, I don't think it's true. So that's really the problem with the old, uh, the affirmation way is that we say these positive statements, but a lot of times we don't believe it. So many years ago, in fact, 23 years ago today, I invented something called affirmations, not affirmations, but affirmations with an O. And that is where you use empowering questions because questions are actually the operating system of the brain. If I were to ask you, why is the sky blue? Your brain immediately starts to search for an answer. So I realized, why are we going around making statements we don't believe when the human mind responds automatically to when you ask a question? So, so instead of saying- example, so, Give me an example of a question. How yeah. would you put that in a question? Yeah, so, so, so an example of an affirmation, the old way would be something like, I'm happy, I'm calm, and I'm good enough. And your brain goes, no, you're not. I'm stressing out, I'm freaking out, right? So it, the, an example of an empowering affirmation would be, why am I so calm? Why am I enough? Why am I always in the right place at the right time? Why are we going to get through this? Now, it may sound simplistic, but actually it's very simple. There's a very difference, big difference. So what your brain, when you ask a question, like, why am I so calm? Like right before this uh, interview and like before every interview that I, that I do, I always ask, why am I so calm? Why am I so confident? And when you just ask that question because of the embedded presupposition factor of the brain, your brain starts to search for the answer and that immediately can cause you to actually be more calm. Mm, so one of the things that everyone should probably be saying right now is why am I having such financial abundance? Why am I so healthy? Right, but then- Why am I so okay being at home with everyone expecting me to be a short order cook? It, hello. But see, this is, you know, there, there's really uh, four steps of the affirmations method. You've got to ask, affirm, accept. And then the fourth one, which is the most important, is to act, right? It's not, this is not another positive thinking Pollyanna thing. It's really about uh, charging your brain, recharging your brain so you are able to uh, act. So it's really empowering you versus using a disempowering question. Because Dr. Kelly, and this is something that you know we've seen over the last two decades, is most people are unconsciously walking around 
asking themselves disempowering questions like why am i why am i so stupid why does ne nothing ever work Wh you know why is nothing ever going right for me i used to say you know why am i so fat why why is nothing ever working and when you ask it's disempowering that. questions it actually disempowers you so that's why the affirmations method is so powerful because it flips them from disempowering to empowering it's almost like the reticular activating system Correct. in your brain you that's can't right. say i can't find the salt i can't find the salt you have to say so you have to say something else. Uh, uh, I'm going to find the salt, or whatever it is that you say. Or exactly. I, I, you know, uh, I, ha I have to. I can't forget my umbrella. I can't forget my umbrella. You have to say, "I'll remember my umbrella." I'll remember right. based on the same thing. It's your reticular right. activating system works in a unique way. So exactly. let's talk to you for a moment, Maya, because you know we're putting all these brain things in place, you know, so we can feel more positive about things and look to look to uh, things with more joy. And, and a more positive outcome. But what about like when you're just in the trenches, right? And, and you're trying to figure out, like I said, everyone's being a short order cook and there's all kind of humor about it all over Instagram about people with glasses of wine at 9 a.m. saying, how am I gonna get through this? <laughs> so um, what is your advice for making the most of our shopping trips uh, and, and making food last longer? So that's a great question, Dr. Kellyanne. So first thing I've been telling everyone, and I feel like I repeat it over and over again, is give yourself some grace. We are in an unprecedented global moment. So that recipe that you know and you love and you always get the perfect ingredients for, you may not have access to those ingredients right now, and that's just okay. Being imperfect in this moment is fine. Now to your question. So you're going shopping. I always say a list is important. A list was important pre-pandemic and especially now it's really important so that you actually end up purchasing the items that you intended to buy. Because we're not going to the grocery store as often as we used to, that shop really counts. So make a list and really go through your house and your pantry and make sure that you have the items you want on that list. The other thing is rotate the things that are in your home, right? So whatever comes in first is what goes out. You don't want to use something that you just purchased use the older one, right? So rotate the items. Also shopping on off hours is incredibly important. The other thing that I would say is, you know, what we've all heard, follow the precautions, right? You wear a mask when you go out, you wash your hands when you come in. If you can carry hand sanitizer with you, do so, right? Some grocery stores, like the one in my neighborhood has a self-checkout, Use that lane if you're able to, right? Because you can go in and you're able to have control of checking those items out yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've also heard from a lot of people who live in you know, urban New York that they're not going to the grocery stores and that they're trying to use food delivery services. And they're so frustrated because they're just online refreshing and refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. So reach out to your community and maybe consider purchasing in bulk. That's something that can be great if you live in a building, you get a huge bulk order because food service they're delivering right now to residential areas. And then you split it, of course, safely maintaining social distance and you get a lot of what you need in. Yeah, that's very common for us in New York. We don't even think twice about it. A lot of people go to grocery stores. We have food sent in. That's very frequent for us, but now there's a lockdown. I mean, people can't, they just can't get through online like they used to. So what about all these great buys? I know that you say that, you know, start with the produce section. What are some great buys that we can be getting and we should be looking at right now that are going to keep us immune, our immune system fighting? Absolutely. So the first thing I say is at the moment, there is not a shortage of produce. So when you go to the produce section, buy any and everything that you want leafy greens, citrus, peppers, cucumbers, really buy it all. So some of the things like berries, which are incredibly antioxidant rich and just fantastic all year round, you can actually purchase extras of those, bring them home, wash them, dry them, and put some in your freezer, eat some now, right? So continue to shop and buy that fresh produce. I always love to focus on leafy greens, any type of leafy green, onion, garlic, peppers, cucumbers. I love the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages, asparagus. I mean, we're in the spring growing season right now. So sky is the limit when it comes to produce. So just shop, shop, shop when you go. 
make sure that, you know, really half of that cart is fresh produce at least so that you're having access to all of those antioxidants and phytonutrients that are just going to support your overall health. And you know, my favorite vegetable to nibble on is always red peppers because people mm. don't realize they're loaded with vitamin C, right? Isn't it? Absolutely. Red have so much vitamin C that nobody is aware of. They think it's, it's I think it has more than oranges even. It's so. delicious. And if you squeeze some lime on top of it, or if you make a little mm. dressing with like OJ and a little bit of vinegar, I mean, you can, sky's the limit with produce. <laughs> it really is. And jicama and guacamole, I mean, it does, and even kids love that. Oh, now you're talking my talk. Yes. <laughs> That's your skin, the whole bit. The kids love it, all the healthy fats. It's a really great thing. But now, Chelsea, to you. Uh, Chelsea, yes. this is all great and everything, but, you know, I am not used to working all of the time around all of this stuff. I'm trying to figure it out. When I tell you that your skill set is not my skill set, <laughs> I, you know, I, it's not my skill set. So give us some advice on how to, you know, how to, how to exist in, in, in perhaps a lot of us are creating new spaces within our home to work. We're dealing with clutter or maybe people that are so busy all the time. You know, I, because I've traveled so, so much, I don't have the level of organization. I didn't expect to jump in to have to be stationary for so long based on my, the, the way my place was organized because I've been living out of suitcases for four years at least. So give us some advice. We yes, need- so I think a lot of people are in the same boat as you are. A lot of people are reaching out saying, I didn't realize how unorganized my life was or my home until I had to be here all the time. <laughs> so um, I would just say the biggest thing is just to simplify and really focus on the area of your house that you are in most. So if you're talking about a home office and, and your home office is a new thing to you, you know that you've had to bring your office home, you just keep the basics right at your arm's reach. Only have what, what you need on a day-to-day basis and put the other stuff somewhere else that's not right next to you. That is going to reduce. No, it's like us. If we say if the camera goes anywhere outside of our little working spot, they would delete us so fast. <laughs> like, oh, seven. we can only keep it right here. <laughs> yes. yes. So, and just don't be don't be too hard on yourself. You know, like what I do, I am well aware that it is not a natural thing for most people. I it took me a while to realize that my husband was the one who told me I should do this for a business. And I was like, nobody needs me. Well, yeah, because my brain works a little different than a lot of people's brains. <laughs> but, um, How do you, so if you walk in and you want to approach, I mean, I know that there's these books and everything that talk about, you know, the three piles, one that you keep, one that you, you know, you give away and I forget what the one that you, you get rid of how do you, if somebody walks into an area and says, I'm going to tackle this, what is the first thing that they need to do? Okay. Well, first thing I would say, start small. Don't start with a pantry, start with a drawer, because when you don't have the brain, like I have, you're going to quickly get overwhelmed and frustrated. So you have to do a small task at a time. When I go into people's homes and they watch what I do, they're exhausted watching me. So you have to give yourself some grace there and realize that you're not going to tackle your one space in one day. Give yourself time. Um, The first thing that we do is take everything out of the space that you want to organize and you're going to sort through it all. And I'm talking like pantry closet, like we take everything out and it really makes you look at what you have and realize, okay, yeah, I, re- I didn't realize I had that shirt that I wore 10 years ago that's just kind of been stuck in there, you know? And you, you realize some things that you are able to get rid of. So, so you take everything out, you sort through things, you purge, you get rid of everything that you possibly can. Only keep what you love and use. If things don't fit you right now, get rid of it because it's just visual clutter. So visual clutter is when your eye can't stop scanning it has no break. So when you open a cabinet and you just kind of like curl up into a ball, that's because it's visual clutter. If it's not organized, Mm -hmm. then your eyes are just going crazy. So you don't 
have that time to relax. Um, so when you open your closet, is it all visual clutter, right? Because you have too much crammed in there. So you only want to put back what you use and that will take away the visual clutter. And also containing. You can use any sort of containment and especially right now when people have, you know, your home office is at home and our schools are at home and everything's at home. You might have to do a temporary organization, right? Like school's probably not always going to be at home. Heaven help me if it is because I have four teenage kids right now, but I, um, you feel free to make temporary bases for things, you know, that aren't going to always be there. But if you can contain things and make a home for things, that is key. And the last thing that you have to do is label. And everybody asks me, well, most people will say to me, I've tried to organize this and they have done a good job, but they didn't label it. So it doesn't stay. And people don't put things back where they belong when you don't have a label. When you have a label, people are way less likely to put things where they don't belong. Are you finding that a lot of people, since they have this time at home, are you getting a lot of calls and things? Are, are people seeming like, like they're using this time to organize their lives? Yeah, and I've, I've had several messages the last week, especially being like, okay, when this is over, I'm realizing I can't do this on my own and I need some help. <laughs> yeah. Great for me, but I do also offer virtual services, so which are great in this time. If you see that you're in a space and you want to tackle it and you just need some pointers and you need a little bit of help and ideas for containment and what will fit in your space, that's, that's something that I do right now. So that's super the way that you can. So Deborah, we're hearing all these other facets about, you know, trying to keep ourselves together during this time and being at home. And you really are very inspirational. And I know that your, your target basically has been 50 and older, but it, it, I think now it's, it's really all of us, all of us, not even 50 and older, all of us are looking for ways to find fun while we're working out. So tell us about kind of uh, how you're approaching this whole pandemic. How has this affected your life, your working out? Has it changed anything with the people that you're working with? Tell us how, how everything has changed for them. And are you, do you think that a lot of experts are thinking that people are going to come out on the other side of this because of the, the stockpiling of all of the carbs and such in boxes? Are we going to come out of this a little bit, shall we say, plump? <laughs> you know, I know a lot of people are worried about that, but I also think the silver lining is that Everybody, every single one of us is loud and clear every day getting the message that self-care is not selfish. You do your job, I gotta do my job, and then we all get healthy and stay that way together. And we've never collectively gotten that message. So we, we're seeing people outside walking who never walked and waving, which is, you know, we're craving just social connection even from across the street. And I think that's a huge benefit. And the message is also clear that it's not extreme exercise. We need to move. And our goal, first and foremost, is right now boost your immune system. Don't bust it. Boost your immune system. Nobody needs to be doing some crazy extreme boot camp right now. And yet, you know, I want to echo what Maya said because it was just so so graceful, it's like, we've got to give ourselves a little break right now. You may not have energy every day. You may experience those waves and need to ride where some days a 10 minute walk, and I call it the 10 minute rule, you know, promise yourself you're gonna go and you're gonna keep your promise to exercise. But if you don't feel better after 10 minutes, then maybe what you do need is more rest and relaxation. But you can still tell yourself, I did it. I'm somebody who exercises regularly. And then if it is feeling better, 10 minutes often, we've already got chemistry changes in our blood and our brain that will keep us going. So you, all you have to do is give yourself that 10 minute mark and you'll, you'll do the right thing because you do that. So I also, I want to clarify something because so many people are hearing moderate exercise, moderate exercise. 
Well, the truth is that we don't really want to be right in the middle. We either want more of that low level walking or high intensity exercise is just fine. In fact, vigorous exercise actually improves our immune cells by five times after a single bout. So what we want is a moderate amount of both the low and the high intensity. We don't just want that moderate exercise because I think if we stop, nobody really knows what that means anyway, right? Sure. Yeah, so it's get regular exercise, get a moderate amount of, yeah, get breathless and reach fatigue when you strength train. That's also important, but then get plenty of rest, including sleep, but days off in between. So you're filling in with going for a walk, taking the dog for a walk, Getting more frequent, short bouts of exercise is actually so much more beneficial. It's like if you had a prescription pill bottle, right? And you were given this, I've got to take this twice a day or three times a day. You would never, ever, ever take that whole bottle at once just to be extremely healthy. Mm -hmm. so we we should, don't need to do that hour and a half workout. What we need is do 20 minutes now and 20 minutes later, 20 minute walk tonight. Much more beneficial for us. And you say that it's more crucial now during a pandemic than ever to make sure that we continue to exercise. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's like good nutrition. I mean, none of us would think we shouldn't eat. We know we need to do that. We just need to pay a little bit more attention to it. We were also born to move. So it's, you know, food is medicine and exercise is medicine. The American Medical Association and the American College of Sports Medicine teamed up to provide that program because it's that important. We really need to be doing it. But if we look at it like that, it's on a dose application. We need it regularly every day. Mm. Yeah, I always say if you could put in a pill what exercise can do, it would be the most expensive pill. I mean, the, pharm the pharmaceutical companies would be making billions and billions of dollars. And you the know, most widely prescribed, right? It, and the right, and the most widely prescribed. Yeah. So I think a lot, I think what's come out of this conversation for me thus far is that a lot of what we're thinking, Noah, is that we've got a lot of, you know, funk in our head right now. We're all feeling a lot of funk and this conversation is really, you know, how do you get your funk out of the grocery store and you're know, thinking about food and oh my God, is there a shortage like Maya's trying to help us with? And, you know, physically like Deborah's trying to help us and, and Chelsea with our surroundings. Tell us about taking out your head trash that's something that you talk about wow. yes well, absolutely certainly... in fact we do have this free gift which is my book get rid of your head trash about money but uh yeah I, i've been teaching about head trash uh for years which is what the way that i teach you with my clients dr kelly is very simple your head trash is the voice in your head that says i can't do it because dot 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 and then you just fill in the blank right so like, uh, you know, people, they come to me and they say, hey, no, I want to start my work from home business. I want to grow my online business. I want to exercise. I want to be more productive. I want to get in shape. I want to get organized, but I can't do it because dot, 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 right? And so this is what I, I always teach people is that whatever comes after the word because is what you're going to defend to the death right? Even if it's something you don't want. This is what's so funny about us human beings. Us human beings will do almost anything to prove ourselves right, okay? Mm -hmm. And so uh, Henry Ford is, is quoted as saying, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. But I like to update that quote with all due respect to Mr. Ford. The way that I say it is, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you make yourself right, right? And so we literally <laughs> have an infinite capacity, we humans, to make ourselves right. So if you say, Noah, I really want to grow my online business. I want to start my business. I want to write my book. You know, it's a perfect time to do it, but I can't do it because I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. Who's going to listen to me? You know, what? I'm, I, I've got kids at home. I don't have blah, 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 right? And this is the thing you always make yourself right. So this is one instance when I talk about your head trash that you really don't want to make yourself right. You don't want to make yourself so, right. What about uh, tips for achieving this uh, peak performance, um, even in an environment like this? 
Yes, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things that I've been teaching for a long time, I talk about this in my books, is very simple. Number one, you've got to understand what your, what your head trash is. So everybody watching this program right now can actually do this in like the next 60 seconds and just write down what are the excuses? What are the reasons that you're telling yourself? You know, so number one, first step is understand what it is you want. I call that your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. What's your pot of gold? You know, is it to start your online business, grow, you know, your work from home business, uh, you know, learn a new language, write your book, get, get your sales funnels up, you know, whatever it might be for you right now, what's your pot of gold? Number one. Number two, what's your head trash? Well, that that's all sounds great, Noah, but I can't do it because. Okay, write it down. What's your I can't do it because? And then number three, and this is really important, understand what that's costing you because there's a cost to that. If you're telling yourself, well, I can't do that. I can't get organized. I, I can't write my book. I can't start my online business or grow my business or whatever it might be. Well, there's a cost to that, you know, not just in money, but in those four elements I talked about earlier in time, energy, relationships, and money. And so going back to the point I said earlier, um, you know, the more control you have, the less fear you're going to feel. You know, when all this started to hit, I said to my wife, I said, how come I'm not scared like everybody? And I realized it's because I have all these systems in place. So I am very fortunate that I have that control because I've built these systems. So it's not magic, it's science. Mm, it's science. And Maya, so speaking of the, this fear uh, that we have, so many people, like we were saying, are afraid what's going to run out at the grocery store? Am I going to be able to get this? Am I going to be able to get that? In terms of stocking up, you know, uh, rice, bread, pasta, things like that, what are some healthier alternatives that people, if they want to feel that safety net that they can stock up on and they know that it's okay for them they know it's healthy absolutely so what i've seen on some of the grocery store shelves still remaining are the ancient grains mainly because people don't know how to process them mm -hmm. right so i've also seen buckwheat and wild rice groats all of those types of hardier you know forms of grains people just have no idea how to cook them so i'll say you know one tip is that they take a little bit longer than a refined grain it can be 60 minutes it can even be 90 minutes depending on what you know you purchase but don't be afraid of them add a little bit of vegetable broth or some garlic onion and ginger and they're incredibly delicious most of them actually have the entire amino acid profile mm -hmm. meaning it's a complete protein also rich in B vitamins and fiber. So it's very, very good for your gut health. Um, so I would say things like that. If you can't get your hands on those actual grains, you can look to the starchy vegetables. Even some of the international ones, like I, my family's from the Caribbean, so like I love cassava, you know, I love green so plantain, I. so good, right? Those are fantastic and a good source of starch. So you can buy those. I mean, they're not as shelf stable as the dry grains, but they last a long time. I mean, I've had some butternut squash and pumpkin on my table for at least a month. And what about, do you, do you uh, combine a lot of these, like quinoa with maybe some other, like if you don't want to get have as much rice, maybe you mix it with some quinoa and, you know, like you said, spice it up with some, I mean, spices are everything, I think. Absolutely. In fact, the other day I did, because I have some white rice, I bought a five pound bag um, and I have brown rice and I got black rice, I've got jade rice, you name it, I have it all. Um, but I basically, I took some white rice and I actually put a quarter of a cup of sesame seeds in and a little bit of flax just to change the nutrient profile, add in some heart healthy fats and some omegas from a plant-based source. And let me tell you, my kids loved it. They said, wow, this is good. It was crunchy, a little nutty. And because of the refined grain, it went down pretty easy. And what about condiments? Do you stock up on any the ones that you love? Like, what are your favorites? I'm laughing. So, you know, this weekend I was on GMA talking about condiments and I had on my counter maybe six hot sauces and I felt like, oh gosh, I have to say something about the hot sauce because people are going to be like, why does she have so much hot sauce? So I do. I love condiments. I have chutneys. I have hot sauces. I have vinegars, mustard, tahini. All of these things can add an incredible flavor boost. So for for example, this evening I did a tofu and it was organic tofu with a little bit of coconut aminos because I like to go lower on the sodium. I love coconut aminos. Everyone should have coconut aminos. Yes, Everyone. absolutely. They're, and then I put some sesame seed in there, marinated it up, and then I put it in the oven and grilled it. And then it went with some cabbage, um, carrot, garlic, onion, and ginger. And then I made brown rice. Oh, have you tried the uh, cashew butters yet? 
Yes, I love them. That's my favorite. I have a cashew butter that has like, it's not real caramel. It's something that's a tiny bit sweet, like date. Oh my goodness. Well, I wish we had the brand name of that. I, it's not coming to mind for me, but oh my gosh. Yeah, so coconut aminos are great. I, I, I mean, this new cashew butters that I'm, I'm, they're phenomenal. I love, I love Primal Kitchens. Um, they, they have really good mayonnaise. It's made from avocado. Nice. Uh, avocado oil is really great, guys. It's one of my favorites, and it's one uh, macadamia nut oil. Yes, that is yes. another. Really good. Macadamia nut oil is very buttery and delicious. So it's great. You can drizzle it, and I think that has a high. I think that has a high um, a heat point too. Yeah. Yeah. It right? sure does. Yeah, it sure does. So you can actually cook with that. And you know, another good oil that I love, I just love butter. I think yeah. butter is great. I think it's good. I mean, if you get a grass fed butter, it's wonderful. And ghee. Ghee is another thing that has a great taste that a lot of people like. You know, the thing about coconut oil and cooking with coconut oil is everything that you cook with coconut oil takes on that flavor. Absolutely. And then it also gets quite coated. It you know, heated. because it's a little bit higher in the plant-based saturated fats. And so when you, if you have a lot of leftovers, it congeals. And that can be, for some people, they don't enjoy that. What kind of sweeteners do you like? You know, I'm really into monk fruit and stevia these days. They're kind of my two go-tos. What are you preferring these days? So you know what's really funny? is I'm a super savory person. And so I actually rarely use any sweetener, but I recognize everybody else in the real world does like sweetener. So in my house, we have an array of sugars. We have some like real brown sugar that my husband uses to like activate the yeast when he's baking. And then we also have coconut sugar. We have date sugar. Um, and usually when I'm cooking, I actually use fruits like dried fruits to kind of yes. increase, yeah, the sweetness and whatever I'm using. I mean, from time to time, if the recipe calls for it, I may cut it by way, like maybe 75%. I'm not a lover of sweets. I have a, I have a thing about sugar just because it's such a pro-inflammatory food. It is. You know, and I, I don't want to be the food police, but sugar, it, it really is so hard the way that it gets stored in the liver, elevating lipids, you know, kind of disruption with blood sugars also can be tough for people with hypertension. And we know that it's just, you know, this is the time to focus on helping to keep all of those numbers within normal limits and manage it as best as possible. So, you know, I'm a little bit on the Beautifully put. <laughs> Beautifully put because, you know, when I, I, I was on uh, Good Day LA and, and they were asking me about sugar and I was astounded when I pulled up some research. It was from like 1973. It was a little on the older side. But what they found was that if after you eat sugar, that your immunity is depressed 40% for like five hours. Incredible. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. So right now, if we're trying to build that armor, it's best that we stay away. Yeah. And so Chelsea, I wanted to ask you, a lot of these things that we're talking about, they're emotional, like they have emotional components to them. Do you find that when people are purging, do, they, do you find that they, it's an emotional act for them as well when they're trying to clean out their life do, 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 do emotions run through definitely sometimes i feel like i'm a little bit of a therapist when i'm when i'm in other people's homes because sometimes we do sit and we talk about items and we figure out like is it worth keeping this item for sentimental value or you know is the visual clutter aspect of it more than the sentimental value. You know, we have to talk through a lot of stuff and it is emotional. It's emotional to get rid of things. Um, yeah. And some, some more, some for more people, more for some people than others, right? Like just because of the way that I work, I'm not as sentimental about things. I like to get rid of things because I like, I know what the visual clutter does to me. So if I can help portray that to other people, once they get rid of things and it's gone, a lot of times people will message me and say, okay, thank you. Like I need, I needed the, the cleanness rather than the visual clutter of the sentimental values. So yeah. I guess, again, you have, you have to kind of look at it, you know, how you're going to feel afterwards because you do feel like there's 10 pianos off your back when you look around and you feel that cleanness. You know, there's something to that feng shui and feeling that you know, open, open space, open space, yeah. open heart, open mind, all of that and creating that, 
you know, I, Bo Eason was on our deep dive the other night. And one of the things he talks a lot about motivation and, you know, he was talking about creating an environment for success. So I think that we really need to think about that during this time, you know, all the levels of success that we want to create at, on the other side of this. So the whole point of this conversation that we're having tonight is to not come out of this situation feeling depleted, but empowered, not feel depleted, feel empowered. So that's why we're, we're having this conversation. Deborah, talk to us a little bit about exercise. And we didn't talk about this previously, so I hope you don't mind my impromptu, impromptu question. Can you talk to us a little bit about what we should be eating before and after we exercise? Yeah, absolutely. And just real quick before I forget, when you and Maya were talking about you know, not wanting to elevate blood sugar or to help stabilize them, that's another great excuse for exercising in short duration frequently throughout the day. That helps stabilize. If you're overdoing it, your cravings actually could go up. And yes. you don't want to do that while you're close to the cupboard, right? So, yes. So, yeah. That's so, a great point. So um, ask me your question again. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So what, what do we, how do we fuel before we eat out or before we work out? Should we be eating? Should we not be eating? Because we just had Pat Flynn and a, a bunch of other fasting experts, Amy Shaw and such on last week. And one of the things they were professing was that it's very advantageous to not eat before you work out. Well, here's how I approach that. When I'm talking specifically to women in midlife, and I think we can all take a little piece of this right now. So women in midlife are a little bit more susceptible to the negative effects of stress because their hormone profile has changed. When their sex hormone profile changes, they're more affected by cortisol levels. And I think we're all a little bit more affected by our cortisol levels right now. Meaning our stress hormones. Absolutely. And when that's true, that generally will drop blood sugar. So if you've got a lower blood sugar level and you're going to exercise, I think what you can do is learn to trust your, your appetite. So if you are gonna be distracted by hunger as you're exercising, my recommendation would be your body is probably telling you it's going to actually do better with some fuel. So be smart with it. There's a rule of thumb and that is if you're about to do something high intensity, your body will use carbohydrates first, and then you can- Deborah, can you sit, can you, if, if I may, if I may, can you just get closer to your microphone? Some people are writing in, they wanna hear you and I can't hear you. You bet, how's this? A little bit better? Um, try again? Yeah, so- Thank you. Uh, yeah, you bet. So when you're doing higher intensity, if you're gonna do interval training, or you're gonna do a high intensity strength training set, your body is going to use carbohydrate first. So a little bit of carbohydrate with potentially a little bit of fat to damper that burn. So you're going to get a little lift and then sustain it. But we're talking less is more. So half a banana and a little smear of almond butter or macadamia nut butter so that you're just taking the edge off your hunger and you've got some energy to get yourself started. So remember, we don't want to be exercising for an hour. Anyway, we want to do these short bouts that are effective and with purpose. And if you're just going for a walk for 20 minutes, we shouldn't be having this conversation. So it's more or less, would you eat? Are you hungry? And, and so don't get carried away if you're just walking and doing low to moderate exercise. It's really only if you're going to go higher intensity and or you're doing a little longer bout. So it's potentially even less important that we talk about that right now and listen to your body if you're distracted That's the best advice of, of all i think all across the board anyone who's seen patients seen client i mean that is the gift yeah. to be able to really be in tune that's like really being in touch with your source power whatever you consider that to really be in touch with that and to be in touch with your body and just listen listen to your body there's sometimes where i feel like you know you want to break it out and there's other times where you have to go inward. You know, you just feel like you want to go inward, whether that's meditation or just sitting or, or whatever. There are times where I say, you know what? And Deborah, you may want to hit me over the head for this. But there are times where I say, today is not the day to exercise. Today is the day that I'm going to use that time that I have, that protected time. And I'm going to just sit here in the sun and I'm just going to let the sun beat, you know, beat on whatever it is. 
I'm going to sit here with my Zen medita my meditation, or I'm going to do some tapping, whatever it is. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. And I think, you know, if we were planning a great workout schedule, and I highly recommend, because we're all craving routine that somebody pulled away from us. So sit down on a Sunday and plan your next seven days. And then structure gives freedom. When you've got it on the calendar, you may get to tomorrow and feel like, I don't have the energy. I didn't sleep well last night. And maybe that workout, you need to do a plan B, which means a little bit less intense or a little shorter or both, or maybe plan C, which is, no, I need to soak up the sunshine today. And, you know, if all else fails, I might stretch a little bit, but that's going to be it for today. That's okay. Plan A, plan B, and plan C. You've still said, I'm consistent. I still had a plan. I want to, uh, so we're, we're getting low on time and I want to stick to it exact. I don't want to go over an hour guys, because we want to put this out to all of our medium and at, at one hour it, it cuts us off. So let's be really uh, make sure that we keep this time tight. So I want to go out around and I want to ask you all a final question. And then I would like Deborah for you to show us if you would, um, if you were to give us your best practices in terms of exercise that people can do at home, I want to make sure we have enough time for that. So Noah, let's talk about, I want you to really speak, look into the camera and speak to people who are hurting right now. No fluff, don't talk book jargon. I don't want any of that. I want you to tell all the people out there that are hurting right now. You've been doing this for what, 30 years you said? Something like that? Tell people what you want them to know. Anyone who's out there hurting, you have their ear right now. What do you want them to know? When we look at the control versus fear, that is, I think, one of the most important things right now. You've got to do whatever you can right now to get back control of your life. I strongly feel that control comes from systems, right? With the systems of your inner game, which is your habits and your mindset, and your outer game, which is, you know, the business practices or work from home practices or whatever you need to do. So when you have the inner game and outer game all aligned with your systems, you're not going to have that fear. Because if you think about it, look, think about all of those people who are going into work, all of our essential workers, the people on the front line, the nurses and doctors and all those healthcare workers, they are acting from courage. They, are, they may have that fear, but they're acting from courage. The word courage comes from the Latin word core, which means heart. So when you are acting from courage, it means you're acting from your heart. Right now, that's what we all need is to get back in touch with our heart, not just your head, but your heart. And when you act with courage, that is the thing that will enable you to get through the fear. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's correct action in the face of fear. Mm, that's beautiful. And tell everyone, know where they can find you, please. Absolutely. So one place is affirmations.com where you can learn more about my affirmation system. And we do also have the book for free. It's sendmeabooknoah.com. Very easy to remember. Sendmeabooknoah.com and I will send you a book. Noah.com. Very easy to remember. Wonderful. Thank you. I really appreciate your contribution this evening. So Maya, so there's mothers out there that are, you know, at home and they've got their kids at home and they're feeding them foods for the first time. And they're going through so much. They're trying to work. They have all these financial concerns going on. And, you know, they're homeschool mo moms for the first time. What do you want them to know? All of these mothers out there, they're trying so hard to feed their children and they're just really overwhelmed. So the first thing that I want to say, and I'm going to look directly into the camera and I'm going to tell all of you moms out there, I know, I feel you are good enough. You are loved. I am enveloping you in my arms. You are safe. You are part of the mom circle. You are great. Mm. The next thing I would say is, listen, this is no joke. I have two kids, <laughs> you know, like Chelsea said, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> I mean, really what we say with food and kids is continue to try, right? Get them involved in the kitchen, bring them in, but keep trying and ask them to take part in it because this is going to go on for a little bit, right? So we want to just work together as a family and continue to offer those healthy, nutritious options. And from time to time, 
something a little bit fun. Mm, so thank you so much. I really appreciate all your information, your contribution tonight. It was priceless as always. Can you tell people where they can get in touch with you? Everyone's, they're writing in that they love you. Oh, um, I love you guys also. <laughs> where, can, where can everyone get in touch with you? You can find me at mayafellernutrition.com. And I'm also on Instagram, mayafellerrd, Twitter, same handle. And my cookbook you can find on Amazon. It's the Southern Comfort Food Diabetes Cookbook. Southern Comfort Food Diabetes Cookbook. Excellent. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you for having me. Oh, sure. And so, Chelsea, you talk a lot about that you love to bring calm into people's lives. So people are feeling anything but that right now for all the reasons I just mentioned. You have a chance now to really speak to people from heart to heart. Tell everyone what you want them to do to try to somehow bring some calm into their life during these turbulent storms. Okay, so, you know, we feel like a lot of things right now are out of our control. And what is inside your home is something you can control. Um, and whether you realize it or not, it's probably causing some chaos. And I think we're, we're all realizing as we're home that it's causing the chaos. I want you to know you can do this. You can do it. There is so much information out there. There's so much examples and ideas for how to organize something out there. If you need help, you can reach out to me. I can help you. You can definitely do this. But like I said, start small and give yourself grace, right? Like realize you can do it a little at a time. It doesn't have to be all at once. Get your kids involved. Your family can do this. Kids are amazing how quickly they, they love the organization. They do. It's natural. They have the structure at school. They have the structure, you know, they, they crave that organization. They crave it. So get your family on board and say, okay, today we're going to go through the stuffed animals. So go through all the stuffed animals and rank them from hot as fire. Like, oh, I love that to cool as water. I don't really play with that one. You know, get rid of little things as you, as you can. And I loved what Deborah said that she said, structure gives freedom. Like, that is, that's it right there. When you have some structure and things have a place that they belong and you're not wasting time and getting frustrated, looking for things, it gives you freedom. It, it does, does. For the whole family. It certainly does. Uh, you know, you've been so priceless this evening and I'm so glad that you're now in my orbit. Chelsea, you've been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for your contribution this evening. Would you please tell everyone where they can get in touch with you? Yes, so my main thing is Instagram and it's Simply Better Organization, but the handle is simply underscore better underscore org. And also simplybetterorg.org is another way and I have a contact form on there also. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you. So we're down to seven minutes. So Deborah, I want you to first talk to all the women and men out there. I know women is you know pretty much your niche, but talk to everyone out there that is going through the quarantine 15 as we speak. They're watching this and they're doing this. You know, I, when this first started, I, you know, I wanted to dive head first into Nutella. So I get it. Okay, so everybody, you know, so, and I pulled myself out and I said, no, and I chose that, you know, I'm gonna be something different on the other side of this. I'm not gonna be that, I'm gonna be this. But there are people, that maybe their, they, their circumstances are, are, are worse, or maybe they don't have the tools and the strategies that we have. What do you tell everyone that, that, that they're feeling right now that they feel unattractive, Deborah? Yeah. They feel sad. They feel like they're getting heavy, so they feel kind of listless. Like Speak to them from the heart and tell them what you want them to know. I really feel like this is a, there is a silver lining. We know it's important and it's not vanity and it's not selfish. It's life. We need this for, you cannot be healthy without movement. And it does not take coordination. It does not take any specific skill wherever you're at. So walking outside, walking inside. So just putting music on and walking in place there is something that you can do and you may have limitations, whether it's financial or space or your knees, your hips or your shoulders, but don't let the things that you cannot do 
stop you from doing the things that you can. Mm, wonderful. So there's always something. And I know, um, did you know there's been a run on hand weights? So I do. So many people, right? So I want to give you this tip. And if you, if you don't have them, can't get your hands on them, almost everybody's got a water bottle. You know, somebody gave you theirs with a logo. <laughs> there you go. Or, or go and get a couple at the store, just plain water bottles and empty them. And then go outside somewhere in your landscaping and find rocks to put in first, then put in sand and then put water in on the top of it. And you'll make this almost five pounds. And that's a, a pair of hand weights. would be hard for people to get, but if, if they just use rocks and water, is that, is that enough? Absolutely. Yep. Use any of those pieces that you can find and, and put as much in it. You can also get soup cans, right? But you want a little bit more if you can. So strength training is so super important. We've talked a lot about walking or what else you can be doing. But strength training right now is actually what's going to help you maintain your muscle, boost your metabolism a little bit more. So we want to do some of that as well as get out and move. Wonderful. So Tell everyone where they can get a hold of you. So I want to make sure you do that before we cut. Um, where can everyone find you? Flipping 50, all spelled out. No, no numbers, no spaces. Flipping50.com. And I really want to thank you for your contribution. You're always just so beautiful and wonderful. Uh, can you show us, we have, can you show us in four yeah. minutes, uh, show us a really good routine that we can start implementing right away, uh, whatever your, your best practices. So I'm going to show you three exercises. So I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to, I'm going to get close to the screen first so you can hear me, and then I'll shout a little from behind. But I want you to do three exercises. And if you do nothing else but three exercises and go through three times, you're gonna do a bent over row. So you're working the large muscles in your back. You're gonna lie down on the floor and do a chest press for large muscles in your chest. And then standing, you're gonna do a squat. So you can hold the weight you can hold two weights. My favorite. Yep. So major muscle groups are really what we want to stimulate. So you want to make sure that you get that. And then if you're outdoors or you're indoors, you want to alternate times when you're working hard and getting breathless and times when you're not. So whether that's inside or you go outside and you find a hill, charge up it a minute, turn around and come back down and do that six times in the middle of a 20 minute walk. And you've done interval training, a little bit more beneficial than just straight. Uh, one last question, push-ups, sit-ups, like the, the core basics? Do you never, ever, ever do a sit-up, but there are other things that you can do. So to give you a little hint, go to flipping50.com forward slash core dash challenge. And I'll give you 30 other alternatives that are better for your back and your core. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much, panel. This has been a pleasure. I learned something. It's been great. And it's, it's very inspiring. And again, our intention is always set out to empower you. We all hope that we've done that collectively. And we are here for you at Doctors Night Out. Please join us. Tomorrow, we have Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. She's on at noon on Instagram Live. Please jump on. She is absolutely, her knowledge base is incredible. You may have saw, seen her on a panel on fasting. She's incredible. Thursday evening, please join us at 7 p.m. where I do my deep dive with Dr. Ann Shippey, who has an incredible story to tell. She knows everything that's going on with COVID, and she has a personal story that's very enlightening. And of course, Wednesday night, we have another panel set out for you. And this is going to be about COVID code. This is all the latest information on COVID. All the doctors that know all the latest information, we're going to bring it to you. We're going to break it down so you're always well informed. Until then, we're signing out. Doctor's night out. We'll see you again. Bye. Signing out in grace. Bye-bye.